dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Olivia Calfi. A grim development tonight out of Western Kentucky. Officials say the search for a missing baby in Ohio County is now over. This after authorities say eight month old Maya Rudd had not been seen in more than a month. Mitch Carter was on the scene at Reynolds Station today. Very somber news, uh, not the results we wanted, but really expected. After Kentucky State Police, the Kentucky Medical Examiner's Office and the Ohio County Coroner spent Friday around the home of baby Maya and the surrounding area, an additional search of the home yielded those grim results that KSP Trooper Corey King says he knew could be coming. But inside the house, uh, it was a dangerous condition for us as well as the canines to be in just based on the amount of residue as well as drugs inside the house. According to authorities, discovered under a pile of debris wrapped in plastic bags and a blanket were remains consistent with baby Maya. The remains were found at 1.15 on Friday afternoon. However, this wasn't the first time investigators had been inside. With the drugs and debris, it had to be sterilized before they could do this final sweeping search. As you can imagine, inside the house, by looking engaging on the outside, it was equally as, as cluttered as the outside. So underneath a lot of debris is where we, uh, unfortunately, located the baby's body. Gotcha. For Trooper King and his detectives, this is only the beginning. Next comes the autopsy. And once they know how and when Maya Rudd died, then can charges be tacked on and pursued for those arrested in connection with this case. We're feeling confident that we can now at least know the condition of this baby and whether it went from a, a search to a recovery now that really changes the mindset and how we do business and what we do best at. And that is, is investigating, getting the answers we need and then prosecuting. That was Mitch Carter reporting. According to King, they expect to have her body shipped either tonight or early tomorrow morning to Louisville with her autopsy hopefully being done Saturday. And we have previously shared eight people have been arrested in this case prior to Maya being found. The three facing the most serious charges are her parents, Tesla Tucker and Cage Rudd, along with Maya's grandfather, Ricky Smith. Tucker, Rudd, and Smith will all be in an Ohio County courtroom on Monday. Now to Rowan County, where a family now has closure. Gary Jeffries, a man charged with killing his girlfriend, Jill Clayton, in 2020, entered a plea deal to serve 40 years in prison. Alyssa Williams has the details in the case. Jeffries pled guilty this morning of his original charges, and those include murder, tampering with physical evidence, and abuse of a corpse. Prosecutors argued that he should serve 40 years, but he would not be eligible for probation. Now let's dive back into everything that has happened so far. The murder took place around Thanksgiving of 2020. Jill Clayton's family first became concerned for her well-being when she didn't show up for Thanksgiving dinner, but says Jeffries attended in her place. It was just a week later that Clayton's body was found in an area near Wolf Hollow Road in Moorhead. The Round County coroner confirmed that she died from a gunshot wound. Jeffries had already been arrested in Louisville a few days prior for being a convicted felon possessing a firearm. He was then also charged with murdering Clayton. That was Alyssa Williams reporting. Jeffries still has a formal hearing that will set the sentence in stone. That will be taking place July 12th at 11 a.m. And a devastating time for the racing community in southern Kentucky. A well-known driver died Thursday. Police say Rod Carter Jr. was driving on Interstate 75 when a blown tire caused him to crash where he died from his injuries. His family says he won a bunch of trophies, but they say his success behind the wheel was hardly what was the best thing about him. Anything you want him to do, he'd do. Just a good man and all, all throughout. Uh, always willing to help anybody. His family says he won numerous track championships and raced frequently in Corbin, Somerset and other places. A funeral service for Rod Carter Jr. will be next Thursday, June 20th at the Corbin Arena. Visitation will start at 10 and the service at 3. Temperatures today were in the upper 80s and low 90s. We'll cool off a little bit as we go into the day 
on Saturday, but outside right now, not bad at all. We're seeing temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Hazard's at 72, Jackson's at 76. Prestonsburg is at 72, 74 is the current temperature in London. Somerset's checking in with 75 degrees. Live pinpoint Doppler radar showing what looks like precipitation. Not the case. It's this time of year where we start to get those false echoes on the radar scans. So we are seeing a clean sweep across eastern Kentucky. Just a rogue thunderstorm, if you will, just to the south and southeast of Lexington. But that's about it. Next 12 hours keeps us in the low 70s by the 4 o'clock hour. Upper 60s by 6 a.m. going to 80 degrees by the noon hour. If you have plans to go to the Perry County Fair tomorrow, I will have that forecast coming up in the first alert forecast in a few minutes. Olivia, over to you. All right, Eric, thank you. And now to an update on a situation in McGoffin County that we have been following this week. McGoffin County Judge Executive Matt Weierman says, quote, Salyersville Mayor Stanley Howard visited my office earlier to inform me that the sewer leak bypass at the Salyersville Waterworks Waste Water Processing Plant has been successfully completed. The system is now operating smoothly. The city's next focus is to secure funding for a new permanent line to the plant. Thank you to everyone for your patience and cooperation during this crisis. End quote. Intake is now open for a new housing opportunity in Breathitt County. Seven or eight homes will be built on Highland Avenue in the city of Jackson. Officials say flood survivors and those living in Breathitt County are first priority. Housing Development Alliance Flood Recovery Coordinator Julia Stinganelli says people are still in need of housing. Almost every day still. Um, there are a lot of people that are, are still looking for a home. There are a lot of people that um, maybe they did the best they could with the resources they had at the time, which could be, you know, repairing their home in the floodplain, um, and maybe they want to be able to relocate to a safer area uh, and things like that. HDA will be working on the construction. Those interested can reach out to FAHI. Intake opportunities for the homes will close on July 13th. Don Franklin's has a new dealership out of Corbin. Community members gathered along US 25 to celebrate the ribbon cutting and the grand opening of the car dealership. The celebration was joined by a couple of UK football players as well. President of the Southern Kentucky Chamber of Commerce, Lisa Harrison says grand openings like the one at Don Franklin's are always a significant moment for the growth of the community. Um, Any time that we have uh, a business with a, a, a opening up a, a new opening, a ribbon cutting, grand openings, um, it's always a, a good sign. And I believe it will bring more uh, into the area because they will see what opportunities are here. Harrison says the ribbon cutting means new business, which brings in new jobs and more money flowing into the area. And coming up on Mountain News at 11, have you ever gone drifting in the mountains? Well, there is a special event bringing people together to do just that. And in the world of weather, temperatures today were in the 80s and 90s. We'll cool off a little bit tomorrow, but here comes Sunday in the mid 90s. We'll tell you how long it lasts in the first alert forecast on the other side of the break. Stay with us. My name is